All right, thank you. I needed a little Lizzo because it's the afternoon and you guys have been here for a while and you've had lunch and now you're starting to fade a little bit, so I needed a little bit of that Lizzo. Um, okay, so I wanted to um, welcome everybody to this track for recognition and reward. I know that you have five choices this afternoon. It is a really tough choice, isn't it? The choices you have, it's, it's kind of like choosing between, you know, there's maybe three I could willow it down, but at that point I was flipping, I guess, a three-sided coin. So I appreciate you choosing to be here. I'm going to do my best to make sure this is a really good use of your time. Let's start with some interaction. Um, because there's enough of us in the room, I'm going to do the hand raising version. So let's start off with this. I would like you to raise your hand if when you've done a good job, you like to be recognized for it. OK, great. And that's not a gimme question, because there are people in the room that are probably like, Ugh! right? Depending on how you're recognized, that's going to make a difference, right? Some people want the balloons on their desk. Some of them, no, they do not. Please don't. The people who like it when they sing happy birthday to you in the restaurant, and the people who will kick their family out of the restaurant if they let on that it's their birthday. So there are people, um, that's a different situation. Less people like to be sung happy birthday to than like to be recognized. But So now what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to raise your hand if you feel you are good at recognition and do it enough. Ha ha ha. Right? Good at recognition and do it enough. I got you, didn't I? So I got a couple. Raise your hand. Let's do this. If you're good at recognition. Yes. All right. Now, how many people think they do it enough? OK, and now I'm going to kill it. How many people think their organization recognizes people enough? OK, a couple. Okay. Oh, RGers in the back. Woo, OK, good. <laughs> Fabulous. All right, so um, I'm excited to talk about that topic, but I'm also excited to, to talk a little bit about the modern workforce. Because I think in the last few decades, and especially in the last few years, there have been changes in the marketplace across industries that have made this topic something we need to pay attention to. Not just do lip service to, but actually be really strategic about. So what I'm gonna talk about, oh, there I am again. Okay, what I'm gonna talk about first is the modern workforce and some of the trends I've seen in working with our clients. I've worked in our Rochester, New York, which is not New York City. I don't wanna, you know, people sometimes are like, oh, tell me about your city. Well, it's small. <laughs> um, but um, I've worked in Rochester, New York and worked with our clients for 13 years and recognition is, is often the focus of our conversations. Um, so modern workforce, why recognition? I'll go through that pretty quickly because I'm preaching to the choir on that one. But then I also wanna talk about the what, when, where, and how of recognition. So there will be a lot of ideas, hopefully a few that you can steal for your organization, a few that you can steal for yourself. And that's the, one, the first thing I want to tell you about why I love this topic. There's going to be three, if I pay attention. But the first one is, the reason I love this topic is because, as Kylie referenced before, you can use it organizationally, but you can also use it personally. So if you are already up to here with ideas for your organization, right, you've got the next 20 years of initiatives planned out for yourself, then you can also be thinking about how do I need this personally for myself, with my family, with my spouse, with the, maybe for myself within my team versus the organizational rollouts and initiatives. So that's the what, when, where, and how. What can you use about that for yourself personally and the organization? And lastly, we're going to talk about getting leaders involved because you are the choir. I am preaching to the choir, but when you go back and, and bring these ideas to others, they may not have the same enthusiasm or understanding of them. So what have we seen people to, to get leaders involved is how we'll wrap things up. Sound good? Okay. So let's start with our modern workforce. We've had a lot of conversation about the changes that have been happening, the acceleration in those changes. First of all, how long we stay at a job is shrinking. So you have felt this, but I feel like there have been lots of clients recently that have felt really relieved to know that it's not just them. That the turnover, it's almost like it's moving so quickly, you don't even have a chance to look back and say, it's different now than it was a few years ago, right? 49% of millennials plan to leave their current jobs within two years. It, it varies a little bit with the market, but what we've seen is generationally, there is less reason for people to stay. There used to be more pressure. Right? My, my in-laws, when I talk about you know, someone I know leaving their job, they're like, what happened? Nothing happened. They decided for a change. What? That's creepy. I don't know why they're, right? So there's more. We're just, it's easier for us to hop around a little bit. The other thing is where we work is shifting. So not only are leaders trying to figure out how to engage this, this workforce that's turning over, but we may not see many of them face to face. 
They may always be remote from us as leaders, or they may once a week be remote. And so now we're trying to figure out how do I engage them when I'm not physically near them? And then the risk is when they're home, if they're not engaged, what are they doing? And how do I make sure that I have the confidence so I'm not worried about that and, and losing productivity in that regard? 70% of the global workforce works remotely at least once a week. That's another thing we're looking at. And I do want to address the generations more directly. Um, I hear a lot of this um, from leaders that almost blame people that are entering the workforce for the challenges they are having. They look at different generations like they're strange or unusual. But I wanted to narrow it down to a theme that I've noticed as I've been reading through information on the generations. What do I think is really standing out in regards to engagement in the generations? And I think if we look at um, baby boomers, represented here beautifully by Oprah, um, that late 50s, 60s, early 70s, their career was defined by their employer. This is a generalization, right? But generally speaking, it was more likely that where you worked was what, you know, hey, where do you work? And that might stay for a while. My father-in-law worked at an energy company in Rochester. He worked his entire career. If he didn't like something they did, he complained about it to his wife, but he did not consider leaving. That, like I said, he was expecting his pension at the end of his career. Why would he leave? So your career is defined by your employer. Then we look at Generation Xers, right? I, I would like to argue that Gen Xers ruined it, not millennials, OK? So my generation, we're in the 40s and early 50s. I'll let you decide where on that scale I am. But 40s and early 50s, we started to say, what's in it for me, though? I really want to think about work-life balance. I want to really achieve in my career. I want to bump around. We started job hopping. That was a term that was really coined for us as we start to move around. And so now, all of a sudden, your connection to the employee needs to be a lot stronger because they are more likely to leave. And then, now we look at the millennials who are taking a load of that blame for what we started, late 20s and 30s. So we need to keep in mind, this is a huge chunk of your workforce, not new joiners, but late 20s, 30s. These folks have continued the trend, and they may be looking for more of a partnership. Then, you know, that power has shifted from the employer has everything and I do what they say to I want to work with someone, not for someone. This was encapsulated for me. I was working with a director of nursing, and she said to me, I used to tell people what to do, and they did it. And now I tell people what to do, and they ask me why. She said, it's exhausting. It's not that I don't want to answer the question. It's that I don't have time, and it feels disrespectful that they're asking. Why are they asking? Well, the opportunity here is actually huge. Right? Because now we have people who are wanting to get involved, be creative, be innovative, be thoughtful. I want to be part of the team, not just someone who works here. But there is an exchange that comes along with that. I'm expecting something first. And so this can be really disconcerting. Whether as a leader you are someone who is a baby boomer or people on your leadership team are baby boomers, or whether, like me, they were heavily influenced by baby boomers, that can be disconcerting. I learned about leadership. I used to call him my work dad, right? He was this wonderful gentleman who worked at a communications company in Rochester. I so admired how he led. But if I, if he led like he did 30 years ago now, he wouldn't, it wouldn't work the same for him. So I can't be what I saw when I was 23 because it doesn't work anymore. So it can be disconcerting for a lot of folks. So there's a lot going on right now in the modern workforce. Things are accelerating. If you aren't in the Gen X or Boomer generation, then this to you may not be as familiar, but a little empathy for those of us that feel like things are moving quick, right? I, my kids would let me know that I'm probably closer to a Boomer in their estimation than anything else, but I think I do try to keep up. So what are we gonna do to engage this group? We're moving quickly, we're working remotely, we don't mind making a change if it feels better for us, but we also know that we really need to get them engaged if we're going to see the results we want to see, and if we're going to feel proud of the accomplishments we're making. We want to support the workforce. That's why you're here. So what are we going to do to make that happen? Well, Kylie actually covered this before really beautifully. We need to figure out what is going on in that exchange. If I want them to do X, what is it they're craving from the workplace that will make that partnership work? 
And Kylie spoke about our um, advisor, Greg Liederman's book, Crave. But here's an example of some of the studies that we looked through in regards to that book. Some of these, I just put this slide up because I love these titles. Men Desire a Sense of Self-Expression to Feel Good About Their Work, 1948. The outcomes of that study was probably it's okay for their wife's picture to be on their desk. <laughs> Earth-shattering news, right? <laughs> But so the themes, as Kylie said, have been a present for 80 years. We just didn't really know what to do with them because it's hardwired. It's actually, this is a different talk entirely. It's hardwired into our brains. Our brains are doing something, asking for something from the environment that makes us feel safe and secure and, and that we're moving forward. So it hasn't changed, but we're only just now starting to figure out how to capitalize on it, right? And as Kylie said, it's respect, purpose, and relationship. This is what people are looking for. And this is the second reason I love talking about recognition, because recognition hits on all three cylinders. There are so many things you can do to engage people, right? You can look at, um, at work-life balance. You can look at bringing your pets to work. Right? Bringing your pet to work is a great way, probably feel respected, like you're thinking of my whole person. Or For us, it builds relationship, because when there's a dog in the office, everybody suddenly wants to work with that person. So it builds relationship. But I don't know that it necessarily connects you to your purpose. Right? Another thing is like the um, increasing frequency of performance evaluations. That's another thing that does a ton to build engagement. And it probably hits on a lot of these, you know? As you meet with me and take time and put your phone down, I feel respected. I, you are able to hopefully connect with me about the goals that I'm looking for and the purpose of my role. And it builds relationship on that individual level. But recognition hits all three of these out of the park at a scientific level, right? <laughs> recognition shows that others are paying attention to you. I did a good thing and someone noticed, just as we all said we really want to have happen, right? Recognition connects my work or your work to the difference that it makes. We're gonna talk about ways to make sure that's actually happening, that it's not just thanks for this, it's actually connecting me to the larger goals of the organization. And relationship, it builds understanding. At a micro level, it can build understanding between you and that person, connection, but at a macro level, if we design systems where it's being shared, then we build relationship between groups. Here's an example. I've been watching the recognitions for Reward Gateway in the, in the coming weeks. I knew about this event because I was planning to come. But the rest of my colleagues back in the US, this is more of a calendar item for them. But as they see the recognitions for the marketing team being accrued, as they see the amazing work and the amazing ideas and the collaboration that's been happening, they understand what's going on and they are, they're building their respect for the team. So that then, if someone on my team is like, hey, I've got this slide I'd love to see redesigned, and they can really think about what's the priority for this. Should I set aside some time to be a little creative on my own, or should I send that over? And if I do send it over, what's my timeline? Am I gonna be like, hey, can you get this done by the end of the day, or am I gonna be a little more thoughtful about timelines, right? So in, in, that recognition as it gets shared, it really builds that connection. So recognition is a really powerful tool to engage people. In fact, we see that this study from 2018 saw it as the number one factor in driving employee engagement. If you were here in the tree line room earlier, you saw that Great Places to Work sees it in their top five. But they also said one of the challenges with it is that it's harder to do. Teamwork builds a lot of engagement, but they said a lot of companies see teamwork happening builds engagement and it can be really hard to make happen at an organizational level. When we survey our clients, do I feel recognized enough? That's a tough one to get high scores on. And why is it important? 202% higher performance in companies with engaged employees. This is your opportunity to make a difference to the bottom line. Not just make people feel really excited to work there and be proud of the environment you've created, but to be able to see, check me out, you know? Sales are going up because I changed how we appreciate people or how we, we, the benefits we have and the commitment that they have. So I went through that pretty quickly because the why of recognition, I think a lot of us in the room get it. But I want to talk about the what, when, where, and how. And the reason I'm going to talk this through is the third reason I love talking about recognition. It's because we might think we know how to do it. But we're wrong. In a lot of cases, we're wrong. When did we learn to say thank you? 
toddler, yeah, right, when you're little, right? Depending on their parenting style, you get smacked in the back of the head if you don't do it, right? Your, mom, your grandma gives you a cookie and my mom's face would crumple if I didn't immediately say thank you with gratitude, right, and cock my head to the side. <gasps> thank you. I wasn't that kid. I was disappointing in that regard. Maybe that's why I do this work, actually. <laughs> but we think we know because we were told as toddlers how important this is. But what's the opportunity here is to elevate the recognition strategies that we use from what we used as toddlers to what we need to use as employers, as leaders, as colleagues, to really fill on this, in this huge opportunity for recognition. So I wanna share with you what our clients are doing in these regards. What are, what are we learning from them across there about the what, the when, the where, and the how? Okay, when should people recognize? I hear this all the time. I wanna build recognition, but what's reasonable? What should I ask managers to do? I don't wanna be a jerk, but I also want to actually see change happen. And I know that what we're facing is a raging river of responsibility. Nobody has extra time for this. Imagine if your whole job was walking around looking for things to celebrate. Ah, best job ever. You'd have low blood pressure. You'd be so generous and kind. You're right, your well-being would go up. Nobody has, well, most people don't have that job. Maybe somebody does, but I don't. So there's this raging river of responsibility that we're all facing. How much is enough? So here is a challenge. Here's my first tip for you to bring home. Here is a challenge that you can either start with yourself, start with your team, or present it to your leadership group, that they do the one plus one plus one challenge. Building a culture of recognition, right, rather than doing it like we did when we were kids, see if you can set a challenge for yourself to say thank you daily. When I say that most, like raise your hand if you think you say thank you daily, right? But, but it, absolutely, but it might be more of that automatic, like someone picks up a piece of paper and you say thanks. That's fine though, right? That's something that we're, we're good at, we're appreciative. Use formal recognition once a week. Now if you're a Reward Gateway client, that could be posting an e-card in the system, but it also could be once a week in a meeting, take a moment at the start to talk about someone whose work really got your project where it is right now. Or you write that thank you card and you put it on their desk. Once a week, something more than just thank you. Or it's you go over to their desk, but you take time to actually connect with them, right? The difference between, hey, thanks for that, and I really want to call out something you did today that was really important to me. That's a totally different feeling, right? So that difference, maybe that's once a week. And then if it's available to you, send a reward once a month. Now, for some of you, these expectations might be way too low for the culture you've already built, more power to you. But if you're looking to build, start here. And what I like about this too is it means that the appreciation, right? The, the um, formal recognition, the appreciation is more prevalent than the awards because we also don't want people to start thinking that the only recognition we do is monetarily based. It's important in a lot of cultures to have that money, but if what we're doing is mostly money and sometimes thank you, people start to, you, you're, it's got, how much money would you have to spend to really appreciate people as much as they'd wanna be? You're just throwing away cash and hoping that they're, they're feeling that, right? Here's another way to think of it. If the one plus one plus one challenge is a lot, think of it like 10 minutes by Friday. I'm gonna give 10 minutes a week every Friday. This is actually my calendar right here. So on Friday, I don't remember what month this was, but I have every Friday a 3.30 appointment where I have set aside time to be grateful. <laughs> it's a great time to do it because by Friday afternoon, I'm usually pretty tired. So I look at this appointment, I'm like, yes. I sit there and I think, doesn't take me a half an hour, but I think about what did someone do this week that I was moving too quickly to really stop and appreciate? This is like self-care, ladies and gentlemen, because I'm thinking about success, not challenges at the end of my week, and it gives me that time. Sometimes I might just call someone or send them a Slack message. Sometimes I might write up a formal recognition, but it's a time that I get used to it. My, um, one of my old bosses used to take one of those, it was like a Livestrong bracelet. He'd start with it on this wrist and he'd move it to this one if he thanked someone. Or he'd have like a coin in one pocket and he'd move it to another pocket. Anything you can do to remind yourself to try and get into the habit of it is fabulous. Because the other thing I know is sometimes when I tell people, oh, 10 minutes a week, what do you, what do you got? Who can you recognize? They're like, Nothing, nothing. Because in a lot of cases, we're programmed to notice what's broken, 
And when you ask me what's working, I literally can't call anything to mind. And that has an impact on your engagement. So if we can build the habit of recognition, you can change the mindset people bring to work and incl include those things that are working in addition to those things that need work. Okay, how should people recognize for the biggest impact? I talked about this last year at the summit. Um, how do you write a recognition? This is one of those things that elevates it from a toddler thank you. And I don't mean to be dismissive. Thank you is a powerful term. But from a toddler thank you to a strategic recognition. We look at how should they do it. And this is the strategy that I use. There's cards that go through these three steps out at the reward and recognition booths. So if you want to take this and use it for yourself personally or for your organization, grab these cards. I actually, we've developed an acronym. It was Doug Butler, our CEO who said I need an acronym if I'm going to remember this, so we gave him one. Um, AVI, tell the action, connect to a value, share the impact. Most people are pretty good about the first one. I will report back to you the actions that you did. Lets people know they were paying attention, but they were there. They know about that. But then we want to connect it to a value, right, that higher purpose. And then lastly, we want to talk about why it's important to us. That's the piece that makes them real, like that's the piece that makes people listen beyond the thanks for that. Hey, thanks for that. Yeah, you're welcome. Oh, when you did that, that helped me feel like our project was on the right footing and I'm gonna leave at the end of the day feeling less stress and more excited about the outcomes that we're headed towards. Oh, that's cool. Right, here's an example. This is in one of our e-cards. Thanks for getting a group of sales champions together to have lunch with Jenna during her first week. Right, a lot of times you might end it there. I know this group is busy, but taking the time to support a new team member is a great example of our one team value. If you're with RG, you might even have a one team e-card that you could use rather than writing it out. Jenna now has a group she can go to with questions, and I believe this support will make her first month easier and will help our team to, be, to more quickly meet our collective sales goals. <laughs> right, so now we have like the welcome wagon in the office, now feels like you're contributing to the sales goals. Yes, and if I'm newer, then I see this and I think, oh, I want to contribute to sales goals. I can get a group of people together. I can be a part of that, right? So it's like an educational piece. It's like an, a, an, um, a learning engine in addition to an appreciation engine, right? So AVI, okay? So that's a quick one. We found that to be really helpful. If whatever you're doing with recognition, whether it's personally or organizationally, if you can bring AVI into the picture, you'll see people listening and paying attention differently. Okay, now I'm actually going to spend a lot of time on this one. Most people think what to recognize is really obvious. You walk around and you wait for something cool. <laughs> but that, ha that works out really well if you're the kind of person who notices cool things. Do you have people on your leadership team that don't notice when something cool happens? Right? They're fun, right? Well, let's help them out a little bit. Let's give them some examples of the things we're looking for in regards to recognition. First of all, it could be your values. These are examples of some e-cards that our clients use, right? So now if somebody did something really kind with a patient, you can recognize them for compassion. Or this is a, a construction company. If they do something that's really high standards, recognize them for excellence. It's a great way to reinforce your values, help people understand what the heck they mean, but also make it feel like that higher level, right? I wasn't just nice, I was compassionate, <laughs> right? So um, also we have some clients that have groups that are, um, that are less likely to be online and they give those folks a nudge, right? This is a form that the drivers, this is a transit company, these drivers have these in all of their garages and they circle the value and then they have people that make sure it gets shared across the company. These are specific cards based by value. So that's the first thing, that unto itself. You might say, this quarter, we're all going to be really focused on engagement and collaboration. Recognize people when they engage and collaborate. Oh, well, that's easier than looking for something cool. I'll watch for that. Another thing might be results. These are actually new at Reward Gateway. We're really excited about these. We now have e-cards that talk about you grew revenue or you saved revenue. For some people, the values, while that's really important, I also want to know I'm contributing to the bottom line. And that might be the point I want to make. So for some industries, it might be fall prevention. This quarter, we're going to look at fall prevention. And anyone who does something that prevents a fall with one of our elderly patients or residents, we're going to recognize them for that. Or it might be the actions that lead to mystery shopper scores in retail. 
you can ask people to look for those things that elevate our mystery shopper scores and recognize those, right? You're getting it, right? Values. So it really comes down to recognizing what you want to see more of. Sometimes what I do with a group of managers and leaders is I'll just ask them the question, what do you want to see more of? And they'll, that we're good at, right? Oh, you know what drives me crazy? Not enough people do X. Great, now you have a topic to recognize for. And when you recognize it, you highlight it, you send the message it's important, and you teach people about how to do it. So I've seen some folks that aren't super enthusiastic about recognition really get on board with this. There was one CEO of a foundry, a series of foundries, and he raised his hand at this point, and he said, um, are you telling me that I can get people to do what I want them to do by recognizing them? <laughs> and I said, yes, and he loved it. He took it on like it was his job, which it was. So that worked out well. OK, so, so here's some other examples, right? Proactively communicate between groups. Maybe that's a challenge you're facing. Put your recognition out there and say, for the next two months, we're going to do that. Suggesting additional purchases. Is that someone on the sales team's job or someone on an account executive's job to suggest additional purchases? Yeah, but does it, is everybody as comfortable with it? No, oh, so let's recognize it when it happens. Identifying potential solutions, not just problems. I hear this in healthcare. They come to me and complain about things. <sighs> Great, so start recognizing the heck out of people who show up and say, this isn't working, but this is my strategy. They blow those recognitions up, and it sends the message. Greeting others with a smile, right? So things we want to see more of. Now, this is the point where some people are going to say, oh, I can recognize for those things. And other people are going to say, oh. That sounds like it's their job. Does, raise your hand if you have people that you think would be resistant to recognition because it feels like we're recognizing people for doing their jobs. Oh, bless them. I understand, right? I understand. I do, depending on personality style or how long they've been in the workforce. This didn't used to be a thing you needed to do, right? So it can feel disconcerting. It can feel a little fluffy, right? So here's one of the couple different ways that I talk to people about that. Then this might be you or it might be the people you work with. First of all, we don't want to just wait for above and beyond. Deborah Corey, she's talking a lot about values today. She tells the story of my husband might love me, but if he only tells me every five years, it's not going to go well for him. <laughs> These people aren't even married to you. They just work for you, right? So we need to make sure they know frequently. If we wait for the amazing thing to happen, it might not happen. So we need to send that message to people. Also, this, the studies on consistent feedback, moving the needle, are pretty consistent themselves. So here's one of the ways I've made this connection. Now, I am actually, in a UK group, going to use an American football analogy. Brilliant idea. But the last time I did this, I actually had people yell out their favorite NFL teams to me. <laughs> I was shocked. Does anyone here have a favorite NFL team? What? Seahawks. I love it. It's reached across. Well, at least we have one. So for that case, I did, I did some research, and I, I think I have some cricket examples I can use. So feel free to make fun of the American trying to talk about cricket. Here is one of the ways that I think about it. I think about we're going to recognize at all levels. We're not going to wait for a championship. Now, that works across sports, so that's good. Some people wait for a championship. You can't wait for a championship. No, you can't. Because if you think about what actually happens on the field in sports, which is a very motivationally dependent field, right? You're wanting to be motivated and excited. You can't wait for championships. In football, you need to recognize the touchdowns. You need to recognize the first downs. So it might be innings and matches, right? We're not going to wait until the end of the year to figure out if we should get excited about our season. Doesn't make sense. It's not what people actually do. We need to celebrate those incremental steps that get us there. And so that sometimes has people click and say, oh, OK, you're right. I do wait for the championships. And that's just how we're, we've gotten used to things. But really try and see if you can push it back. You can even say, like, whatever term works for you. We have companies in the States that are like, tell me about, tell me about a first down, tell me about a, a touchdown, and tell me about a championship. And how you celebrate those will be different. That's why it's cool that we have awards and day-to-day -day thank yous and e-cards and formal recognition. Because what we want is to accumulate this recognition and appreciation over time versus having them wait till the end of the year to find out if they did it right. 
Here's a no one more thing about what can we recognize for. I have entire companies that make their entire recognition year happen because of, believe it or not, this. So if you, if you saw Sevi's talk all the way till the end, when she was talking about analytics, for our reward and recognition clients, you will start to see a graph like this. What it is showing is for one group, this is our Rochester team, where are their recognitions going? You can see we, t we recognize ourselves, bless us, right? But we also, secondarily, we recognize our team in Bulgaria. We work pretty closely with them. We also recognize our team in Boston, and we recognize our London team. And then there's smaller groups over here. Sydney is way down there. So Kylie, we have got to get on that, right? We need to start recognizing your team. But so a graph like this lets you know, and over time you can say to your team, it's fabulous that we're recognizing each other. But if we really want to build connection, if we want to make work go easier, if we want to build understanding, we need to recognize the people in the other groups that help us. You can do it for selfish reasons, or you can do it because you're a, a recognition kind of gal. But we want to recognize those people who help us so that, that we can really grease the skids of that collaboration. And what we can do is, over time, watch this graph and see, am I starting to build? The next time I check, is the Sydney part bigger, right? Sevi and I looked at this graph for her team, and she said her team's graph was a lot more like this, right? Because they're relatively insulated. But the rest of us need to know more about what her team does. And recognition can help with that. So this, I spent a lot of time on this one, right? So here's the summary. What are we going to recognize? Values. Contributions by business goal. If that's what's going to get people fired up or you fired up, pick a business goal and say this month that's what we're going to look for. Actions you want to see more of. Couldn't get any more general, but hopefully that one really speaks to you, what you want to see more of. Incremental successes or first downs. The actions that take us there. And then people outside your department or group. When I worked, I worked with a nursing team a while ago, and they just said that's what we need to do. Because we get, it gets very competitive between groups. Well, I can't possibly take care of patient care because the physical therapist didn't bring the patient down when I expected them to. And the facilities people didn't have the linens that I expected. Ugh, now we're dealing with problems instead of the successes. So making them start to recognize each other really did a ton to help with culture. All right, so this one will be shorter. <laughs> Where can people recognize? Well, I work at Reward Gateway, so I am going to put up a, slot, uh, a picture of our, our system. This is um, an e-card from our group in Rochester. Now, I'm being a little flippant about putting up something from the Reward Gateway platform, but there is a lot to be said for online socialized recognition. The opportunity I think about, first of all, is the collaboration piece. As I said, we all know what's going on with marketing, so we're going to talk differently to marketing this week than we would have otherwise. Right? As I start to recognize the people in different groups that are being especially helpful, they understand what it is our group might need to be even more helpful. So the first thing about that visual recognition that's, that's out there for everyone is the collaboration piece. The other one is documentation, mm -hmm. right? So I used to do um, performance evaluations. I did like every two weeks one-on-ones. Performance evaluations were every six months. Every six months, I am not going to remember what they did to the extent I would like to. So I would go in, and I would search for their name, and I would look at, for the last six months, everything they did. And there were times when there were major pro projects that they had kicked butt on that I was forgetting about. And how engaging is that when your boss forgets about the big project when you're doing your one-on-one? -on -one? So going through that documentation made me look smart, made me feel like a better leader. I had help. The other thing we use this documentation for is onboarding with new starters. If someone is starting in retail, going out and picking a couple examples of recognition that support all of your different values, you now have a manual that's not just what to do, but how to do it. We even have clients that use it in um, recruiting. We have one client, I love this. They did it because their culture had gotten so good that people were showing up and they were like, this is going to be skating in the park. It's going to be so easy. You guys are going to give us benefits. It's going to be amazing. They actually had a really high-powered team. And the reason they needed to focus so much on culture is because they had really high expectations. So they were challenged with people coming into the organization, expecting to be treated like kings and queens, and being shocked at the 
amount of work they were needed to do. So they started putting into their recruitment stories of people working late hours, stories of people giving up vacation days, but it was like the situation, why they made the decision to do what they needed to do, and how it was handled by the rest of the team. Now, obviously, they're working on work-life balance. They don't want to be a sweatshop, but they were giving that example so people would know there's a lot we're going to give you, but there will be times where you may, do, may need to reschedule a dinner. That's the expectation for this group. And by putting those good news stories in, they sent that message. So some people who needed to a more rote schedule, they knew that wasn't the place for them. So I love that because of the documentation as well. But then where can you recognize, right, anywhere you want? In the start of meetings. Kick off a regular meeting. Do you have a meeting that you don't especially love going to? Yes, you do. Start saying to people, I went to a conference and this is what we're going to do. We're going to start kicking off this meeting with an example of a story of success. Some people will be like, yay, and some people will be like, ugh. But be tenacious because it will really change the tone of the meeting. It's maybe some weeks you challenge them. Bring a story of someone outside of our group that's really helping us. So kicking off meetings, obviously one-on-ones. Social media, this is me recognizing beautiful Megan. Lovely Megan, because she and I work together at NX Live, and she does such a great job that I wasn't willing to just say thank you to her. I wasn't even willing to just put it onto the RG page. I posted it out to LinkedIn because I wanted people across our communities to know what a great attribute she is to Reward Gateway and how lovely a job she did. So um, social media is a great opportunity to really build pride amongst friends and communities. And then lastly, I love this. This is Snack Nation. They have car caricature artists do caricatures of people who've lived their values, and they put them out around this clock as value victors. So another creative way to demonstrate it, but anywhere you want, right? OK, so here's what we're going to do. I want to wrap things up a little bit, though, with while all of those things are well and good, how do you get more people than just you involved? You know, and without one-on-one -on -one conversations, I don't know that I can solve all the problems, but here are some of the things that our clients have found especially valuable. First of all, building and sharing expectations. You may have an expectation for what rec good recognition looks like, but if they don't understand or know it or have the opportunity to question it or think it through, then it's not going to necessarily be sustainable. So maybe your CEO recognition expectations are the one plus one plus one challenge, right? That was daily, thank you, weekly, formal, monthly award. Recognizing in one-on-ones, <coughs> right? Making sure you're recognizing the good work of the people on the leadership team. They may not always hear that, and we can't expect leaders to recognize others if they never hear it themselves. It's a losing proposition. And then maybe it's also recognizing people in teams and in the weekly blogs. Whenever a new initiative, whenever a change is announced, what Doug Butler does that I really appreciate is he puts in the people who contributed to that success or that change or that project so their, their names are in lights in addition to the information. Maybe the leadership team, right, if we take it down, they also do the one plus one plus one challenge, recognizing their one-on-ones. And maybe their job is to bring their group's successes to the full leadership team. So now if I know a major project went really well, that the, that the finance team did something great, then maybe if I'm in charge of HR, I go and I visit that finance team, or I send them a note, or I call them, and I say, really great job on that project. That makes my day, because I get to be the person that gets to go celebrate things as my job. But it also makes sure that uh, just more than that one person is supporting that work and engaging that team. Ma now, your managers, right? Sevi did a great job of saying how important this, this, this group is. One plus one plus one challenge. Challenge them for it. See who can do it. Highlight those people that do it really well. They should also be recognizing in their one-on-ones if they're having them. But if they're not, highlighting successes in team meetings. The one practice you could say is, everybody, when you kick off your regular team meetings, start with a success. See who can do it. And when it goes really well, have them share the stories, because it will go really well. And then the fourth one, maybe the expectation for employees is that they place a recognition once a month, if you have a formal recognition program. Right? You can decide what works, what is reasonable, what is realistic. Maybe you start small with just the one plus one plus one challenge. 
You update it, you talk about it, you see who's doing it, and you start to add to these expectations. So I think first of all, we want people to know what are we asking for when we say recognize more, right? So this is a really crucial one. But then we also look at making sure we all understand how to take recognition to the next level. Some examples of why, but also some of the things we talked about, right? What, there was a whole page about what? When to recognize, what did I say about when? What was an example? What? First down, yeah. Where are we gonna recognize? How are we gonna recognize? All of these things. Bring tips, maybe once a quarter you've got a tip on one of these things, but really make sure that you're giving them some of the expertise that you, in many cases, already have. But one of the things we're really looking to do is shuffle people from being doubters to believers, right? We know we've got doubters out there. So here, I'm gonna give you um, three examples of what a doubter could be. The first one is people who say, I don't get it, they get paychecks. Raise your hand if you think you have people at your company that would be that level of doubter. Okay, yeah, you got some work to do. But you know what? There's less and less and less of those people over time. That got dark, but you know what I mean, right? Like, um, so when I started doing this, when I said, <laughs> you, we will win for we are young. No. Um, when I started doing this, I heard this all the time. 10, 15 years later, occasionally someone says it, but they say it because they know everybody else on the team is going to be like, seriously, dude? No. So that, I feel like that is starting to fade. We also have the I would recognize, but I barely have time for my real job. Raise your hand if you know that. And that, honestly, this might be some of us, right? I've had a week or two where I've thought, I don't have time for this, but I know what a priority is. So I've made, I tell myself to shut up and go and do my job. Then the third one, I would recognize I just only do it for special occasions. Right? Raise your hand if you know people in your organization like that. Right? Those are the championship folks, which is fine. When do we take a class on recognition? Other than you folks, they haven't had the opportunity to really think it through. So what do we need to do with these doubters? Right? We're going to set those expectations. We're going to um, make sure they understand some of, of what, when, where, how, how. Yeah. And then here's another one. Sevi talked about the engagement metrics that are out there. If you use reward gateway recognition, you have graphs. One of the best things I've seen is a group that printed off the number of recognitions by department and just slid it across the table at leadership meetings. Didn't even really say anything about it, right? They, the CEO was in on it, but they just started to pass it out and say, this is just for informational purposes. And people were like, <gasps> there was no retribution. There was no like nagging. It was just, as they started to see that their group was high up or low, they started to get more engaged with making those metrics what they wanted them to be. So if you've got metrics about engagement, recognition, turnover, anything like that, the opportunity to just passively share them and see what happens. Um, we also see spotlighting engagement practitioners. We've talked about this, but if there's someone who does a bang up job, it doesn't need to be you that tells the story of recognition, it can be them. They may have more credibility. You're gonna want more people on your team sending this message than just you. So look for people that do a great job. Frontline folks, right? People on the front lines that are influencers, that are really good at supporting their team, have them come speak to the leadership group about why they do it. Recognizing leaders. Here we have Sevi and Jonathan, who's running around with the Summit shirt, making part of the team that's making this happen. It's really important that we take the time to recognize leaders. Maybe one of the best things you can do is setting aside time to recognize people on that team, and then you can check in with them in a couple of months. How has that been? That's one of the reasons why I really want to make this happen, right? Making sure they're getting recognition or the pain you, like trying to get someone who feels unappreciated to appreciate others, that's a struggle. So you might need to start with leaders and then cascade it down. Serve up recognition opportunities. I once went to my boss, Greg, right, for those of you who know him, and I said, I just worked on a project. I'm really proud of it. I'm gonna tell you about it, and before you have criticism, the first thing I'm gonna need you to do is tell me I did a really good job. <laughs> and he knew me, he didn't even blink. He's like, okay. I told him what I did, and he very seriously was like, you did a really good job. And then he just added a couple sentences for genuineness, right, and told me. And then I was like, okay, I feel better now. I put a lot of work in, now I'm ready for criticism. But I was aware enough to say, I need you to give me this feedback. Otherwise, when you start to critique it, I'm going to fight back, man. So let's get this thing over with. I want the recognition. But you can do this for groups, right? You can say, hey, um, 
listen, I know you've been out of town and you haven't known this, but this group has been killing it. I need you to walk over to that group, send an email to that group. This is what I would recommend. I know so many folks in leadership positions that really appreciate this, that you just say, here is the recognition I need you to do. Hopefully you want them to be generating it themselves, but make them aware of the things that with your ear to the ground you already know about. So tips for getting leadership involved. Build and share the expectation. Work with them on it. Maybe the one plus one plus one challenge, you need to start with only one of the ones. That's fine. But something is better than nothing. Introduce the why, what, when, where, and how. Publicly recognize um, or publicize metrics. Spotlight leadership practitioners that are really great at it. Recognize those leaders and serve up recognition opportunities. OK, so in the final minute here, you may be feeling a little like this. <laughs> you have had a full day of hearing some really great information from some really great presenters. And I put a lot into this presentation because I don't want to come all the way here and only give you a couple ideas. So I did a little bit of this. So what I wanted to share, especially for Reward Gateway clients, is that we're really looking to provide these opportunities outside just of events like this. So if you have a reward and recognition product with Reward Gateway, we have added in a feature called the Reward Gateway Client Academy. And in your support, you have a support dropdown. So if you have a recognition dropdown, the actual words are very customized to you. But in your support dropdown, look for a question about recognition, and you will get to the success portal. A lot of this is technical information. But there is now a Reward Gateway Client Academy. There is that AVI thing I talked about, action value impact. There is an article. There is a video. There's even a worksheet that you can bring to a leadership meeting that talks it through and has spaces for people to fill in the A, the V, and the I. There's resources that you can go get so that you don't need to generate these arguments. You can pass them along. Here is an example of the categories, engagement, supporting recognition, effective communication, <coughs> using data and analytics. We've thrown this data and analytics thing all around. There is an article that will walk you through the different areas of that report and help you see some of the insights, including that cross-departmental conversation. Driving accountability, and then resource library connects it to some of our external marketing stuff that's also incredibly helpful. If you haven't signed up for our blog, I really recommend it. Um, a lot of us that you've seen speak today contribute to that blog, and you can get these things out throughout the year. This is specifics for recognition. The video, three steps to powerful recognition. Video, what to recognize. Video, recognize often for a culture of recognition. They're about two minutes long. You can even, if you have a smart hub, put that out there on the homepage of your smart hub, and then you have that for others to see, so it's not just you. <laughs> 